Welcome to the last episode of this series, and this time we are going to go together to one of my very favorite places, the Dutch Home Computer Museum, which you see here in these images. Machines from the 70s all the way to the noughties, they have just about everything. And if you look to the left, uh, next uh, to the Altair that you see in there, if you look further down, there is a PET 2001 8. Um, and that may look familiar to you. It has been the subject of a previous restoration on this channel. I'm going to put the link to it um, in the description below. The difference is that because this computer is on like 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week, uh, I removed the original chips and I replaced them with newer ones and in some cases some memory adapters because the old chips just cannot survive this constant use, you know, being on and available to visit visitors every day. Uh, so the original chips are safely guarded, <laughs> but this is still an original machine in the sense that it's working like exactly the same way as the, the machine worked back in the day. Now, this is an overview of the rest of the museum. Look at that ET machine there, that's a Holborn. Um, the Holborn was a unique uh, um, Dutch family of business computers. You see several models there. Uh, you see the, the, the disk drive storage unit uh, over there on the floor. And this one here, this is the only surviving prototype of a Holborn uh, system. So this museum is the only place in the world where you can see unique systems like this, um, like the Stadis that was covered in a, in a uh, video by Pete, the, the Nostalgia Nerd. I will link his video uh, in the description as well. And this machine may also come across as familiar to you. It has been the subject of yet another restoration on my channel, um, which I will link to the description below. It looks like a pet, but it's a Japanese MZ80K um, computer, and the first in the famous renowned MZ series. You can also see the, this at the museum. It's not on all the time because it has the original chips, uh, but you can always ask the museum staff to give you a demonstration or let you, let you play with it. It's a machine from 1979. And there are a bunch of other unique things in the museum, like old storage systems. This is core memory the most reliable memory in the world. Um, it's a non-volatile memory. Um, it's extremely reliable, Go, goes for decades, but it's very large, very bulky, extremely expensive, and has very small storage capacity. Um, so one day, this was the memories that, uh, that were used uh, in, in computers. Now we can go continue to go on a tour, and here you see, you know, the Ataris, the Amigas, the Apples, uh, the MSX machines, uh, PCs uh, are coming up. Uh, there is even a part of the museum where you can use the internet as it was in the 90s. They have their own dial-up set up, their own servers connected to, uh, to the Wayback machine. It's a fantastic place. You can easily spend a whole day here <laughs> without being bored. Uh, it's quite a large place with literally thousands of systems. This is the entire Apple collection, lots of Commodore pets there at the back. These are only parts of the museum. It goes on and on and on. I love to come to this place. But yeah, um, this is about the Sol 20, and uh, here um, you see me and the museum director, uh, Bart, unpacking the Sol after transportation. I'm pulling, up of, pulling out of my backpack some of the stuff we need to use the Sol. Now Bart is doing the honors of uh, unpacking the system. This may be the best preserved Sol 20 system in the world today. It's fully functional, it's working completely, um, and it, it, it looks the part <laughs> as well. Um, and since this is an interactive computer museum, you, you will be able to ask uh, the staff to give you a demonstration and let you play with the machine, although it will not be on at all times, because again, this has the original chips. Um, remember, I did um, minimal intervention restoration. So this machine, if we keep it keep it on 10 hours a day every day, it's not going to last long. Um, so it will be normally off, um, but you, if you come with a group or if you make an appointment for demonstrations, uh, you can use the machine. 
Here we are setting it up. We need a power down transformer from 220 volts in Europe to 110. That's the black box you see there. Um, of course, I, 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 I'm, all those old chips that you see there, those were the defective chips. And somebody suggested to me, bring the, the chips that you replaced to the museum and let them be part of the exhibit. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, the old defective chips will be there next to the computer. And this whole setup, uh, it will still be decorated with stuff on the wall and other things around the computer to, you know, to recover that sphere of the mid 70s. Right now we are just setting up you know, the star of the show, uh, which is the SAW-20. And uh, Max uh, telling Bart how to load software to it from his uh, laptop. So here we are loading target. The AM radio is there at the ready, so we can uh, 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 hear the sounds as well. We are using an old uh, period authentic, more or less, uh, Zenith uh, monitor. And then now we are running Target, so <laughs> everything has worked uh, just fine. Um, we had some difficulty tuning the AM radio to a frequency that really picked up the sound coming out of the soul. This may have to do with the fact that there are hundreds of computers on uh, in this place. So there is interference all over the place that may be making it more difficult. We pulled out the antenna of the AM radio at some point. I think at this point I, I tried to pull out uh, the antenna. It was still difficult, so they will have to play with you know which frequency exactly uh, should we tune the radio to in order to pick up the sound um, the best way possible. So it will still be, there's still some, some fooling around with it to, to make this exhibit uh, fine-tuned uh, and, and perfect. Uh, and then that, all the decoration is still coming as well. So this is it for this series. Um, thank you for joining me uh, in this journey. It has been quite a journey. I appreciate your company. It has given meaning to what I do. Um, and um, I will see you next time for Cerberus 2100 for the next uh, uh, Palos ES videos and for the next restoration as well. Thanks, take care and uh, till next time.